Sup everybody, this is Carrick with ACG, and once again, it's my continuing mission to bring you previews and reviews that aren't two minutes long or filled with sponsor bullcrap. I am astonished, and that is not very often. It's not hyperbole to say that Blacktail has me completely mystified. Mystified because I didn't even remember hearing much about this, and also because after hours of playing it, I am still not exactly sure if what I'm doing is good or bad, or even believing what the game tells me. Let me weave a tale for you. Blacktail's coming out December 15th from Parasite, and it is published by Focus Interactive. The game centers around the girl Yaga, Baba Yaga, as you will know, but prior to her turning into the witch before she started eating babies and running around with chicken feet on the bottom of her hut. And the hut is here too, a mysterious home base, replacing the village that you supposedly lived in right prior to the game starting. You see, Yaga just got kicked out of her village, accused of being a black-hearted evil witch, and has to go out into the wilderness alone, following her sister, who mysteriously sneaks out of the village anyway. And what follows is Yaga's search for her sister, and to uncover some even more more mysterious events that have happened in the past, of course, involving children's disappearances. Right from the start, it feels like a fairy tale survival game. All the graphics are classically thick art, almost like a Disney cartoon, but then slightly askew, not realistic, but instead artistically a little off, with scale slightly off, huge mushrooms, constantly falling particulate in the air, and every creature to talk to has an almost labyrinth quality to them. For instance, at one time, you help an incredibly confused rock grub try to figure out how he got to this side of the trail, and as the conversation comes to an end, he just randomly mentions that the demons need milking. The next moment, you're skippity doo on through the woods and you find yourself on a trail where giant rabbits have apparently died, leaving their skeletons alongside the trail, resting in this disquieting look like they're praying to a nature god. It is disquieting, at the very least, if not a bit disconcerting. Everything is this weird charismatic descent into madness from the very start, or maybe just pure evil. As you get your bow and you start learning how to hunt or help creatures by shooting down fruit from trees, everything you do has this weird puzzling question mark to the elements for it. Every action promises and whispers and pretends to be there for your safety or to teach you something. But whether artistically or through vocal hints or even soundscape hints, it slowly replaces the grist of finding and protecting family and friends with the thought of protecting you so that you can then protect friends and family. And then that last part about friends and family seems to fade away. If there's anything in Blacktail that hits oddly, it is the vocal patterns. You'll notice it right away. Everything has an Alice in Wonderland feel and look to it, but only if that's done on a stage at a local middle school with the modern type of tact that the vocals have distracting a bit. Every time you expect a fairy tale like moment, there's almost a cell phone back and forth to the vocal messages that you get in the presentation. It sounds way too modern, and yet it's hard at this time to not know if that that's just one more narrative puzzle piece and one more place where Blacktail's trying to seduce you into thinking you actually know what the hell's going on. As you move around the forest, you find out that you can camp, you can save at prayer sites, and you can go off the beaten path. Normal stuff we see in survival games. But slowly, then at first, more quickly, the unyielding forest begins to make more sense. You begin taking on small side quests and find yourself conversing with cursed mushrooms who think honey is gold and then finding a horseshoe in the forest that might be the difference between life and death. But all these things go particularly off kilter as you realize that getting information from this world many times requires you to do damage to it. Take out a pinecone looking owl that's resting on the rocks and as they drop, they also drop their knowledge in whispers and languages you can't understand, but there's subtitles to tell you that you get the understanding from it at the very basics. But at what cost? Then you get to sit by a fire and you find a massive old burlap sack that looks a bit like a rotten jack-o'-lantern and it croaks like a frog grab what's inside, and it slumps to the ground dead. Just dead. Pet a black cat and find out it's a teleporter back to Baba Yaga's hut. Everything has a tinge of darkness to it. It's just like hearing one of those upbeat songs, and then you listen to the words and you realize it's about suicide. By the way, that's the first 10 minutes of this game. Finding teeth inside of boxes as a voice tells you to go brew a witch's brew in a hut with it to become a hero. And why not? Since you didn't take the teeth from someone, they're just in a box. It's that odd turn of story beats that has you questioning every single thing you're doing or seeing in the game. Kill a deer to get meat for healing, but it's so majestic and outfitted with antlers like Bambi's dad that you start to wonder exactly what's up. Start to overhear characters talking and you can't quite figure out if they're puzzled or if 
if they're bad guys trying to make you puzzled or notice your hands when you take off a mask you've been wearing for some time and you see the gnarled fingertips underneath it. it makes you wonder if innocence is lost or if it's gone already or if this is just another part of the presentation leading you astray and the game tells you you can be a good witch a bad witch or a middle ground witch but i'm wondering about that because then you die randomly. Maybe you get in a battle, maybe it's because you weren't paying attention, or maybe you just tried to run through some giant glowing bees with huge bowls of honey and you thought they might be safe, and you come out of your checkpoint tearing yourself out of the ground like a friggin' vampire. Try to cross a river and drown, or did you? Even as the voice in your head warns you that a witch can swim or float, but someone who isn't a witch can't, and then it asks you, did you die? And honest to God, you can't figure out if you did. To further that witchy feeling, you go and make new spells and brews at a boiling cauldron, because nothing says good guy like dropping some teeth and eyeballs into a boiling pot of stew and chugging it back. As you unlock skills that give you new access to locations and abilities, nothing surprising is really there, but each skill has an animal trait behind it. Rabbit, goat, raven, and snake. By getting particular ones, you unlock other skills called hexes, which, no matter how good you are, doesn't sound like a good thing. The hut also judges you on your actions as you take on quests and interact with the world. World, occasionally you get a notification that says the hut remembers good and bad each time you teleport back baby punch in a black cat the judge tells you who you are and what you've done and you get some skills or you can't get others depending on how terrible you've been this causes this amazing cyclic bit of gameplay that has you going out and the moment you discover something you're just running around trying to find another black cat teleporter to see exactly what the hut is going to say about you. One problem with this game so far though is a particularly distracting special effect when rain drops, giant drops of that rain stick to the camera giving the world a disconcerting prism like effect that really becomes tiresome. I was changing the effects and I think you can remove that one but it is still a little bit off kilter. Luckily it's not not always raining in the game world. It's just that when you first jump in, I did notice that. Another thing I noticed, the music in this is haunting. Just one example of this, stepping back and taking in the look the first time as you see the shimmering gossamer edges of Yaga's hut, almost like the predator cloak. And there's this chorus that filters out around you. It's ethereal at first and then gets almost overpowering as you move around the location. All the while, this dissonant chord plays out underneath it. As the chorus fades, that chord just keeps playing like it's warning you the entire time you're in that location. So far, the soundtrack is excellent. Rain and wind and sound effects also are very good. Your footsteps thump across empty logs, crossing a small stream. It's all very wide as well, giving the forested locations that cool feel of openness that you hope for. All of the samples also very high quality. My true question is this though, can a game like this hit and continue to feel this odd for a great deal of time to tell its story without giving away too much or without making the player just so damn confused they no longer care? So far, that has not happened. I've spent time talking to Queen Ants who promise bloodshed and sentient mushrooms who turn a prior discussion about freedom on its head and makes you question another part of the story you get a little bit later. Also, the gameplay is adding in those skills. The ability to take out occasional attacks like goblins with multi-shot arrows starts to pop up. It is not exactly fast-paced combat, but the combination of learning powers from the woods and trying to find out what's happened doesn't really require that. Another look at the skills list does show and indicate that we're going to have more combat as the game continues, though. Graphically, this thing looks awesome, with the aforementioned effect being really bothersome. At times, the human mixed with forest creature and plant feels a lot like the old game Maze I reviewed. If you get a chance, go check that review. It was one of my favorite indie games of all time, where this game has you talking to crazy-ass mushrooms. That one had you talking to militant sentient corn. I loved it. This also reminds me of Valley, one of my favorite indie games of all time, not because you're running around with mechanized stilts like you did in that game, but because of the way it doles out its mystery, even though you sort of are already supposed to know where it's going, or at least where it started, but how you get there, and when you get there, how much truth you're going to be able to uncover. I'm not a huge of survival games, I've told you guys that, and while this one has survival elements, it's got so much more to it. It edges you around the ideas you may have, but then says, no, do it your own way, but when your own way feels like the wrong way even though it should be the right way it's a little bit like getting directions from a very old relative you end up in the same place but getting there might be a little bit more of an adventure than you expected this could all turn out terribly wrong when the full review code comes out it could fall apart it could just end up being boring and repetitive 
But so far, this world is amazing. Traveling through it, even its more budgetary look and span than something, let's say, from a AAA dev, has me absolutely convinced that this is one of the games you should check out for 2022, at least so far. So that's my preview. As always, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Check out the Patreon. It absolutely helps the channel, especially as everything gets demonetized or adult rated. You're going to see some more AI reviews from me, AI previews, normal previews, more reviews, and there's always the podcast on Spotify and iTunes. Again, check this game out when it comes out. Blacktail, I'm sure I'll have a review.